Well guys, today we are coming to you, or at least starting this video, down in the dungeon basement in the freezers. And you can see here, the fruit is pumping out. We have so much fruit coming in right now and we are freezing, freezing, freezing. But that also means other stuff has to come out of the freezer to make room for all these berries. But we're not complaining because it is really, really nice to have these berries when it comes time for winter. So this week is already underway and I'm going to kind of talk you through what we've done so far. Basically what we have managed to do is we've taken out a bunch of roasts out of this freezer, lamb roasts, and we're going to make some lamb stew. So right now I have some bones that I also took out of the freezer because gosh there's a lot of bones in here and they take up a lot of valuable real estate. The dilemma is I don't need to make more lamb broth right now. You can see here on the shelf I have a lot of lamb broth plus there's some overflow boxes underneath and I'm going to just kind of sit tight on those and try and make it work leaving them in the freezer. I have since asked the butcher no more lamb bones for a little while but it is a very valuable product and it's great to have that broth when it comes to making you know little side dishes but I'm digressing. So lamb stew, that is on the agenda this week. Today we're making up the broth. We're gonna leave that to sit overnight so that we can take that skim of fat off the top and then tomorrow will be lamb stew. So I've got to defrost these roasts. They're sitting in the fridge and then we're going to cut them up into nice cubes. I know I have stewing meat in here, but realistically the roasts take up so much more room and we have so many roasts and we never eat roasts. I don't know why, I can't explain it. It's just something that I never get around to planning ahead to cook a roast. So we're going to be making lamb stew and we're going to be doing something else, which I'm gonna to talk to you about when I get upstairs. So the part I'm definitely most excited about in this video is, drum roll, Look what I found! Pomona's pectin. So many people have recommended this to me and the only place I've been able to find it was online on Amazon, things like that. And I just wanted a pack to try. I didn't want to have to order a big amount or anything like that. My local home hardware, it wasn't cheap. I will say that it was like $9.95, but apparently one uh, thing can do up to four recipes. So I'm very curious to try it. And I did see on Amazon that I can order a larger amount for a lot less money. So <laughs> this is something that I think is going to be very helpful moving forward with the diabetic needs from my diet and trying to reduce the amount of sugars because like I've said over and over and over, I know uh, we make our own yogurt. We do that sort of thing. We make Dutch baby pancakes with almond flour, things like that. And I still want to have syrups and jams and jellies to sweeten and flavor those things. So this is gonna be wonderful. I'm super excited to try it. Going to try two different methods. So we will come back to this because first, I have something very important to do from the freezer. So see these jars? Today, I'm going to try something that I have not done before. I have removed from the freezer everything that we have stored for months and collected up to make our cat food. What our cat food is, is we use up all those pieces of meat and things like that that we don't want to consume when we're processing our uh, animals here on the farm. We bung them into little containers and we throw them into the freezer until they have enough to make it worthwhile making cat food. Now, usually I would freeze the cat food into containers and I'm not sure if I have a video on that exactly or whether it was looped into a freezer challenge video, but I'll see what I can do and I'll link something below. But usually I then put it back into sour cream containers after I've mixed it all up and it goes back in the freezer. That's a problem because I took it all out and I filled the space with raspberries. <laughs> so it can't go back in the freezer. So today we're gonna try canning it. I'm basically just going to put the meat right into the jars, try and mix it around. I've got 24 jars here. So hopefully I can fit it all into those 24 jars and then I'm going to pressure can it. So. Let's see if we can get that done so that we can move on to jam today. And just as a little tidbit, I'm going to turn you here. Here's our broth. I've already turned it off and it's just sitting here for now. I'm going to get these bones out. Now this broth, all I put in here was salt and pepper because I'm going to be using this for my lamb stew tomorrow after it's had time to sit in the fridge and have that lard layer come to the top. So we will visit that tomorrow and I will kind of fill you in on the details with all of that. But still, bones out of the freezer, which is awesome, cat food out of the freezer, which is awesome, and four big leg roasts out of the freezer, which I'm going to get chopped up to be our meat in our lamb stew. Well, next day, 
and we're kind of catching the end of the hurricane that's coming through and I'm sure you can hear the rain in the background. I've kind of got that wet dog look because I just came in from doing chores and got completely drenched. But thank goodness I picked these raspberries yesterday because today we are testing out that Pomona's pectin. But first I'm going to show you here a little clip of the cat food that I canned yesterday. Not loving it. I had, well I had one jar break which was, you know, that happens. But I had two jars that didn't seal. It was really, really greasy and I do think moving forward Hopefully I'll have freezer space to keep going with our usual grinding method because I don't like this and to be honest I don't think the cats love it as much either. But we'll see how we do. Worst case scenario as I mentioned earlier it could be chicken food instead. So no losses. Everything gets used around here right? But I've weighed these raspberries, added them to our tally. We're now up to over 46 pounds of raspberries harvested. So needless to say today we're making raspberry jam. So as you know, I was super excited to find this in our local store and I'm super excited to try it out. We're gonna do both recipes, one with the honey, one with the sugar. I know you can do it without anything and I will in future try that as well because I'd like to kind of know if we could get away with that but I have a feeling with raspberries, it's gonna be better with just a little bit of sweetener. So the first step for us is to crush up four cups of these raspberries. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do for both batches and then I'll bring it back. Okay, so we have our fruit all mashed up. I actually measured how many cups of whole fruit I was putting in to get the four cups of mashed up fruit, and it was eight cups. It said eight to nine at anything I'd looked up, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna mash it as I go and measure it out for just my own peace of mind, so I know in future. So eight cups basically equals um, four cups of the uh, mashed up or pureed fruit. So next step is going to be to mix up our calcium water. This is something that I've not had to do before. I almost wonder if the calcium water is similar to the calcium chloride that I use when I make my cheese. I'm gonna Google that because then that would kind of make it easy because I already have calcium chloride water. Um, so half a cup of water in a, a little mason jar. Need to be able to shake it once the lid is on. So we're gonna put half a teaspoon of calcium chloride in there, shake it up, and then we're going to mix two teaspoons of that into our pot with the fruit. Stir that up and we're going to make the honey recipe this time. So what we need, half a cup of honey and we're going to put two teaspoons of pectin stirred into the honey before we then mix it all together. So let's see how this goes. All right, so our jars have sterilized in the oven, 225 for 10 minutes and my lids are just at a, not quite boiling, but resting nicely in their hot water so they are good to go so we are just waiting for our fruit with the calcium water to fully come to a boil and then we're going to add in our honey which has the pectin mixed in and then we're going to bring that back to a boil and we're going to boil that for at least two minutes and then jar it up it's that easy i'm very curious i think it's probably only going to make maybe four or five one cup jars but that's okay it's going to be so fruit rich i think it's going to be fantastic and i've also made the decision before the end of this video we're actually going to do a third batch which has no sugar added and then we're going to kind of taste test them all see how they set i think it'll be fantastic i am super excited about this to find a low sugar option and finally find it in Canada. <laughs> so we're going to get these jarred up and then we will move on to our next batch. All right, so first batch made with honey is in the water bath canner now. 10 minutes in the water bath canner, then we're going to take it out. I ended up with about a half cup of a sampler. Now that's still hot, so it's not setting yet, but we're going to leave this alone. We're not going to even taste it until we've got all three batches done and then we can really do a great comparison. So I've labeled that one with the honey. Uh, what I've done in all these recipes is I've gone with the minimum amount of sugar that they suggest. They say half a cup to a whole cup of honey. I did a half cup. They say three quarters to a cup and a half of sugar. I'm doing the three quarters. So otherwise process is exactly the same. Fruits in the pot with the calcium chloride water. Stir our pectin into our sugar and then we're gonna mix it in once it comes to a boil. Boil for two minutes, then we're gonna jar, and 10 minutes in the canner. Well guys, that's a wrap for today of this video. We've got our two batches of jam done, but you're gonna have to sit tight and wait till the end of the video when we collect a few more raspberries to get that third batch done so that we can do a taste test of all three versions of low sugar jam. So tomorrow, we're gonna get cracking on that lamb stew that I've 
put the uh, broth away for and I've got to get my meat cut up tonight but I will bring you back in the morning and we will get busy making that. As a total side note or kind of a side note these freezer challenge just can it videos really are about using stuff out of the freezer and freeing up space for the new harvest season but I view keeping these raspberries from going in the freezer right now is just as important for saving space in that freezer. Well guys, we are on to crazy things today. It is 36 degrees outside. That's Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm really terrible at calculating, but I'll write it down on the bottom if I remember. But that lamb stew still has to be done. We got everything organized and chopped up yesterday thanks to James. He did a great job on all of those vegetables and him and Alex are just finishing up doing our potatoes for this. We didn't cut them up ahead of time because I didn't want them browning. But interestingly enough, we are using the last of our own homegrown potatoes from 2023. Alex just calculated it for me. That's almost 97 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so now I don't have to remember to come back and write that down. So we browned off our meat. Now we're going to get everything into our big pot. For this recipe, as I said, not going to go into any great detail, but you need eight cups carrots, four cups onions, four cups celery, 12 cups of potatoes, your five to, we're putting in seven pounds of meat, and a few other things that we're going to kind of touch on, but I do have a video that I will link above that has a bit more detail on the making of this stew. We're just going to kind of whip through it here, and we're just showing you, once again, what we're getting up to to empty that freezer and get some stuff on the shelves before the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Wow, is it warm. I have a nice cool cloth and I just keep dabbing like this. We don't have air conditioning, so really I try to avoid doing this canning in the middle of this heat. But I'd already started this project when it was cooler and we've got to get it finished or it's all wasted. So first thing we need to do is take the lard off the top because we're going to store that for future use. I will melt it down and get it into some jars nice and clean. But underneath this layer is that lamb broth which we're going to be putting into our pot along with all the other ingredients very simple recipe we're just going to bump everything in the pot bring it to a boil and can it that's it all right so you can see there we got a nice little layer of the clean lard we've got a big pot of our lamb broth you can use water in this recipe if you don't have bones to make lamb broth it's not a big deal we just do it for the extra flavor so we're going to set this aside get everything in our big pot and then pour it on top and bring it to a boil so I apologize if the fan is making too much noise, but there's no way we could do this without the fan on today. Every time I go to shut it off, it's just like, oh, dying. Anyways, so the only other thing that's to go into this is our salt, pepper, and thyme. And I am fortunate to be able to pick it out of the garden this time of year. No pun intended with the multiple sayings of thyme. But then we're going to stir this and see as you saw i basically put in about i'm going to say two and a half liters of liquid i have a feeling i'm going to have to add some water to this uh it's a lot in the pot now one thing many of you will know from following along with my previous videos i always make more than i need this is a big batch of stew i will have leftovers i'll get my seven jars and i'll have enough left over for dinner so we'll just leave it to keep cooking and uh, come back to it afterwards. So let's get this up to a boil. It needs to boil for about five minutes and then into the jars it goes. And I know I will get numerous comments about the fact that I could just raw pack this. I have not actually experimented with that very much and I kind of, this recipe's always worked for me so I don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? All right guys, it is almost time to wrap up this video. Lamb stew, seven jars, was fantastic. We actually had enough left over for a full meal for all four of us, so that would have been two extra jars with that recipe. Once again, we were using seven pounds of meat instead of four to five, so that's probably where the extra bulk came from. But I have to say a big shout out to James for cutting all those vegetables up for me. It made things go so much smoother. And I had to take Alex to a dentist appointment and he even watched the pressure canner for me to make sure it stayed at that 10 pounds of pressure for the full time. So awesome work by him. But we haven't quite finished with these. We haven't taken our rings off and given them a wipe down before they go down into the jar. But I'm kind of leaving everything on the table here that we've canned for this week because I want to show it at the end of the video. But where we're coming back to now is that raspberry jam. As you know, we made with the sugar 
and we made a batch with the honey. We haven't tried those yet because we wanted to make a batch with no sugar trying this Pomona's pectin. Honestly, I'm really excited to see how well this all sets with no sugar added because that's something that's very important for us moving forward in our diet. I do want to try it with stevia as well, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So we're just going to do the three types for this video and then I'm going to do a stevia on a separate uh, video. It'll probably be in the Every Bit Counts Challenge or something like that. I froze a whole bunch of raspberries to make a few more batches. So without any further ado, we're going to get this last batch of raspberry jam done. My jars are in the oven, 225, going to sterilize for 10 minutes. Our lids are in the water bath and uh, slightly heated, not boiling. And now we just have to get the fruit out, get it to a boil, put that stuff in. I'm going to kind of read the pack again because it's been a few days and I can't remember exactly how to do it, but I will bring you back and we will talk about it. So a few things seem a bit different about this process now. The pectin needs to be added to three quarters of a cup of boiling water and then blended for a minute or two to get dissolved. So that's what I've got going on here. I'm boiling my kettle. I have my fruit heating over here and what we need to do, same as before, is add those two teaspoons of calcium water to that and then I'm going to just let that come to a boil and kind of mash it up a little bit and then we'll see where we go. I'm a little skeptical on this but hopefully it works and is not a waste of fruit. Uh, I've never had raspberry jam without any sugar added to it. <laughs> so it'll be a learning curve for us, but I bet you it'll be so fruity, it'll be wonderful. So I've got it all blended up. It went kind of a thick, cloudy substance, which I guess is what it's supposed to do, we'll see. But one thing I'm finding is I have a lot left kind of on my uh, blender here. So I'm actually just gonna stick this in my fruit and blend because now that my fruit is boiling and mashed up, at this point, we just pour the pectin in. I'm reading the instructions as we talk. So it says, uh, bring the fruit to a boil, then add the water pectin. And at this point, I could add stevia to taste if I wanted. I'm really tempted to just kind of sprinkle some crushed dried stuff in there, but I didn't have it ready to go. So we're just gonna keep playing for the moment and next time we'll try it. But then uh, bring it back to a full boil, it says. Basically, that's it. Stir mixture while it comes back to a full boil. So I'm just going to put this in and kind of blend it a little bit to get the stuff off. Just like that. Going to have my handy dandy spatula here and we're going to just get this in here and start stirring. My jars have 55 seconds left and then they're ready to go. And then we will have the moment of truth. I also was reading on the packet, I can do syrups. You just use less pectin. So I'm really curious, because as you know, we do a lot with syrup, fruit syrups, that sort of thing around here for our yogurt and all that sort of stuff. So this Pomona's pectin could really change the game for our fruit usage. You still have to watch how much fruit you're consuming, even uh, though fruit is good for you. We tend to stick to berries here on the homestead. That's something that's super easy for us to grow. It's very plentiful and it is good for us to have in our diet. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details here. I'm gonna get this to a boil and then we're gonna start jarring it up and we'll come back with a taste test. Um, yeah, it's gonna sing. Jars are ready. So one thing I should mention is that after we jar this quarter inch head space and then we're gonna put it in our water bath canner for um, 10 minutes. It's got to be boiling for 10 minutes in the water bath canner. So I better get that up on the stove and get it started heating up. So we are going to show you kind of how they set and we had a catastrophe. Learning curve for me, obviously these were not sealed and my honey one fermented and molded. I should have put them in the fridge because it has been a couple days uh, and it's been very, very warm. So needless to say, what I'd say for a sample, we will not be trying but I am going to open a jar. So we'll take a look at one that had been water bathed. So just pop that one open and I see mold around the seal or rim, or at least it looks like mold. It is black and not pleasant. So that is a honey one. Both of them seem to be questionable. So I'm just kind of looking along the rim here and it's got black along there too. So I don't know, everything was sterilized, everything was put, oh, this one looks good. So the honey one, for some reason, didn't do as well, obviously, as the sugar one. I don't see any black on the sugar. So 
I'm going to open one of the honey ones that doesn't have any mold. We're going to use this as a learning curve. We're still going to taste test this because we want to know the answer as to whether it is worth doing it that way. If it's going to mold, I'm going to say it's not going to be worth it, but we're still going to get a taste test out of this. And our most recent batch here, which I just popped my partial jar, uh, is the one that had no pectin. So here we go. All right. So we kind of got distracted by the mold on the honey. So I just wanted to show you, they did set no problem at all. Uh, the sugar one was the least amount of set, but also again, this didn't get properly sealed and I'd left it out. So maybe one of the jars would be better, but I'm not opening them because they actually don't seem to have any mold on the rim. Honey, pretty much out, but we're still going to taste test from one of the uh, jars that looked okay. Chris is skeptical, but I'm still going to roll with it. So I'm going to smell it before we eat it. Right? <laughs> there we go. Which one's this one? You said you didn't want to know. Okay. Yep, okay. Okay. I know, we're keeping you in such suspense, right? Okay. I know which one I like the best. I think it was number one. No, mine was number two. Second one for me was the best one. So which one's which? The first one was no sugar. Didn't like that. That was way too tart for my liking. And the other one was the sugar? And this was the sugar. And the last one was the honey. Now, interestingly enough, the honey one is the one that went the most gelled consistency like a normal jam. Now, it had a bit of a strange taste to me, which could have been that it's all off. Uh, as Chris mentioned, we use... Uh, it's, um, it's raw. It's raw honey. And maybe... There we'll, just was something in there. We'll do some looking into it as to why that may be. It shouldn't have done that, but it may be out for us because to buy the product and lose the, the jam. Yeah, honey's not cheap, and to uh, have it not work doesn't uh, really do well for me. But I have to say the one with only three quarters of a cup of sugar is fantastic. I really like it. As long as it stays good in the jars and doesn't mold or anything, I went through the same, you saw it, I went through the same process for all of them. So for the honey one to mold and nothing else, then that says there's an issue with the honey. But if the sugar ones stay good, I did get six 250 ml jars and one small 125. And that was only three quarters of a cup of sugar. So that's pretty fantastic. And I'm willing to kind of play with that a little bit. But I think for me, it's still going to be with sugar. But a lot less of it. So just as a quick little side note, we popped open a properly sealed and water bath can sugar jam because Chris mentioned that he thought the one that I'd kept on the table was a little bit fermented tasting. And this one tastes fantastic. And look at the clean lid. Exactly the same process as the honey. And the honey certainly did not produce a clean lid. Unfortunately, that means that we have five jars of wasted food. Uh, but... It was all worth it. It was an experiment. I am still very, very pleased with the Pomona's pectin in the sense of the low sugar jam. I didn't love the one with no sugar added. Chris didn't mind it. So earlier in the video, I talked about the expense of buying the Pomona's pectin. And at $9.95, it seems steep. But because I can get four batches of jam out of that or extra other stuff if I so desire, that really does bring it down to being cheaper than the regular pectin, especially when you consider it's like one sixth of the amount of sugar going into these jams. So as long as that sugar one stays sealed, stays unmoldy and tastes great when I open it, Pomona's is gonna be a win. So we're gonna visit that again one month's time. I'm gonna check those sugar, I'm gonna open a new one and we're gonna see how it is. So all in all, we had a little bit of disappointment with this week and this uh, just can it with my jam. Uh, that's okay. But another thing I wanted to touch on is in the last Every Bit Counts video, I talked about the fact I was going to start my jars because we've been dehydrating like mad. So I've already got some basil, stinging nettle, and some mint 
going in these jars. It's not going to take long to fill a couple. So that is also on the agenda as we keep going forward, getting ready for every bit counts.